finally got the new parts, the new brake line for the mule. So now it's time to get underneath there, see if I can figure this out. So remove the old one and put the new one on. It's good I got to remove the old one. That way I can kind of see how it gets put together properly and then I can just replace. You see, this is the front part where it works its way towards the center, but there it goes into or passes through this piece of frame, which means to access it from above, which is up in here, is probably gonna be a better option. And then, comes all the way along here and connects back in this section, but it passes through the frame here. So while I can get my hand in here okay, you can see light up above. It might be easier to access this from, from up there. All right, so from up top here, looking straight through, that is where the break, the back part of the brake line comes in. So I can access that pretty easily from over here. So that's nice. Oops, sorry, from up above, so up here on the deck, the this center plate, right, covers wiring, and piping that comes from up in here or goes to it. And so from this screw, you come forward to about here, and this is where the brake line enters the centerpiece. And right about here is where I should find the nut that it connects to. So I need to get to that in order to replace it. I got these other bolts out successfully, or the others not out successfully. There's one right here that is just so rusted and degraded that it's not gonna come out. And now when I'm looking at this, these two hex screws are clearly aftermarket. I'm gonna get that out so that I can take these out and then lift this center plate out of the way. At least that's my plan. So I'm gonna have to grind that down and then to, to get rid of the head of it, so then I can pop the whole thing right off. This is a mess in here. All right, so this is the brake line that comes from the reservoir. You can kind of see it through there, right? So it's gonna come down and bring brake fluid. Sorry, I'm trying to do this and keep my balance to here. Now this, this is a three-way junction. Fluid comes in here, goes out here to the left side and out here to the right side of the vehicle if you're facing forward. All right, so this goes driver's side, that goes passenger side. So, somewhere underneath all of this goo is uh, the nut. This is what it should look like if it's clean. All right, so that will fit in there. All right, that's unscrewed. Holy smokes. See now that the uh, screw is out of there completely, so the entire mechanism can be moved out. I gotta pull it from all its places underneath. There's no way to do that upside down and backwards and look cool or feel cool about it at all. I just hope that the rear nut is not like that because that's very difficult to reach. Okay, there's where that's going to come out. Comes out past that place where I had it bracketed. Well, somebody did in the past. All right, so I got to pop it off there. That's just a. That's just a little um, clip 
plastic clip to mount it into. There it goes, that's out. That's free from right up in there. So that's out. It's just, it's gonna have to be pulled from all the way in the back. There's another bracket right there. I might need to pull that from above. And then right there, I don't know if you can see, that's the next screw. That one does not look corroded at all. So I'm gonna try and reach that from up above. See if I can loosen that up. Okay, now I'm trying to hold this here, just uh, looking through the screen so it's not too steady. But this starts to turn, but look what it's actually doing. Can you see it's turning the piece right here? That's turning. So if I come back the other way, see the whole, the whole thing is turning. So I gotta figure out how to hold that still so I don't damage it. And then uh, get that bolt out or get that screw out. All right, I got it. There's one end of the big vice grips. There's the other end clamped onto that thing. So there they clip on that side. And then on the other side, I was able to uh, get the wrench in there and unscrew that. So now I got to remove the whole thing and then uh, put the new one in. I like the way I say that. Now I just got to remove the old one and put the new one in because everything about this has been easy so far. All right, here they are. New ones on top, old ones on the bottom. See, it's got some mileage on it. Part of this though is just me beating on it to get it out. And I learned a bit getting the old one out. I mean, it does, it does come out. You just got to do it in the right order. There's a way to do it where you don't have to put any undue stress on the line itself. So I'm gonna try and repeat that. But again, it's uh, start at the bottom. Well, I can't show you. I need two hands. Okay, anybody out there who's done this before, if you are watching, then uh, you probably said, good luck. And uh, you're not wrong. I had to put a little bit of stress on this bend right here. And by stress, I mean kind of giving pressure to almost straighten it out a little bit to allow this to slide up underneath here and ultimately poke out through to the top side of the deck uh, in the center where the connecting point is. Okay, that one went back in clean. I had a slight fear of cross threading, but uh, it's, uh, it's in there now. I've got it snug down pretty tight. I haven't cranked on it. Uh, I'd rather not crank on it, but we'll see how it does after I uh, get the other one connected, fill it with fluid, start it, and get it running to pump the brakes a few times. All right, I got that on there. Put in brake fluid, started it up, uh, pumped the brakes a bunch. Um, then I went back and loosened that back nut to let a place for the air to escape as the brake fluid went through the system. Saw the drop in the reservoir and then eventually heard the squirt back here of fluid escaping. Stop all, go in, tighten that down, and then uh, refill the reservoir, tighten it down, pump the brakes. It seems to be okay. So uh, I'm gonna change the oil since I got everything set like this and then uh, oil and filter and then take it for a ride and see how it goes. So while the brake line change was success, the oil filter, the oil and oil filter change was an incomplete success. Uh, that's, a, that's a bit of a bummer. All right, oil filters in progress day two. Last night it got late. I got the oil drained from the engine and then went to remove the filter and it would not budge. So this morning I went and I purchased um, oil filter socket that would fit this type. <laughs> All right, I put that on, got the ratchet in there, began to apply leverage, and it just spun and just crushed the edge of the filter. None of my other attempts. I mean, I tried the straps, I tried it all, and nothing was getting that thing to come loose. And I was, and, and it's in such a position in there that I couldn't like, you know, drive a screwdriver through it and then crank it, you know? So I had 
one last thing. It was going to be this, which, you know, this is just an adjustable set, but boy. And then uh, a monkey wrench, if I could find a way to get it up in there. Fortunately, this, the first couple times I did it, it was just crushing and ripping the filter. It was not coming loose. And then, I don't know, shot a WD-40 around the edge of the filter, got this thing on there again really close to the base, and cranked, and it turned about an eighth of an inch, and I knew victory was at hand at that point. So got that off. Now I just got to put on a new filter, uh, fill it back with oil, and then I'll uh, be ready to move on to another project. Man, can't believe how that went. Okay, all done, all reassembled. I went with the classy option of putting a little duct tape on the seat to cover that up, because that was splitting on me, so yay. Got all the parts reconnected down here. All of that and no leftover screws, so that's pretty good. So what I actually did is I did take it out. I went for a gentle drive through our tranquil countryside to make sure all parts were working. A ride that did not disappoint. So, good stuff. Going to clean up, get on to the next project, which is actually going to be cutting some of this grass, which is two feet long now. I love a big fan of water like that when it's when the oscillating sprinkler is going. That is just it's so pretty to me. Stuff growing up. I don't know if this is corn or if this is something else. I think it's something else. I think it does sorghum look like this? I just looked it up. Uh, that is sorghum. By the way, on I, I don't know if it's like, the, I have an iPhone. So if you, if you take a picture of a plant, then you go to your photo um, library and you pull up that picture, there's a little eye icon at the bottom with a circle around it. And if it gets little stars, like a little diamond thing popping up next to it, you can click on that. And there's a thing that says, look up plant. And you can click on it and it will tell you what kind of plant it is from, from the picture that you took. Technology, man. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Girls are in a fresh spot out here. I took an extra length of fence, so they've got a really big paddock out here now. Paddock? Pen. Whatever. So that's really giving them a lot of room to roam. So I'll be able to leave them here for a week easy. All right, that's it from here. We'll talk to you guys later.